Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Almighty and everlasting Father, we, your people, come before you at this time to just worship and adore your matchless name. You are a good, good Father. You are sovereign Lord. You are Alpha and Omega. Indeed, Lord God, you are the beginning and the end. You, with a word, have cast and spun all that we have known, all that we do know and will ever know into being. You, Lord God, are the great I am. You are creator God. You are healing God. You are promise making and fulfilling God. You are forever faithful. And Lord God, you are indeed holy, righteous, Lord God. None can compare to you. And even now, Lord God, we come before you just in awe, absolute awe of who you are. Lord God, you crafted such a beautiful plan for our lives. You continue, Lord God, to consider us. You, the creator of the universe, consider us individually. You crafted us uniquely in purpose, on purpose, with purpose. And Lord God, we say thank you and we praise your matchless name because, Lord God, there is none. There is none like you. But Heavenly Father, you 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 with giving us the, the amazing gift of choice. We must admit, Lord God, that we have chosen error. We have chosen sin. 
we have chosen at some times, Lord God, to step away from your will and your way. And in so doing, Lord God, we have stepped into darkness. We have dabbled in the muck and the mire, and we have fallen into sin. So even now, Lord God, we ask for your forgiveness. We ask, Lord God, that you search us, that you move through our beings, move through every aspect of our lives and start, Lord God, the cleaning process. Or rather, Lord, continue the cleaning process. Uh, even further, Lord, complete the cleaning process. Indeed, Lord, see if there be any wicked way within us, Heavenly Father, and cleanse us, Heavenly Father, we ask in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you do a new thing in our lives. Touch our unclean lips, Heavenly Father. And indeed, bring about restoration and healing and rejuvenation in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, right now we give thanks and we give praise for the opportunities that you continue to, to afford us. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunities we did not even realize or recognize. We thank you, Lord God, that you continue to show grace and more grace. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to show mercy and more mercy. We thank you, Lord God, that you continue to love us above and beyond all we could ever think, fathom, and or imagine. We thank you, Lord God, that even now you are continuing to walk with us. You command your angels concerning us in Heavenly Father. We are indeed thankful and grateful. Indeed, Heavenly Father, we raise a hallelujah unto your name. We give you the highest and the best praise because nothing else will do. We thank you, Lord God, that even though you're moving through this act of worship, we thank you, Lord God, that you're about to do a new and amazing thing in our homes and in our spaces. And we thank you, Lord God, for everyone here present, our friends and our families. And we thank you, Lord, that you continue to do, that you continue to be, and that you continue to be the great I am. So, Heavenly Father, we ask that you be in this act of worship. Indeed, Lord God, with everything done here, may come unto you as a sweet-smelling aroma unto your nostrils. Abide with us, Lord God, as we continue to abide with you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
is according to Mark chapter 16, 14 to 19. Later he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were sitting at the table, and he upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness, because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptized will be saved but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name, they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes, and they will drink any deadly thing. It will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. This is the Gospel of Christ. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell The guilty pair bowed down with care God gave His Son to win His erring child He reconciled and pardoned Yeah. 
throughout the Easter season, a particular message has been on my mind. It seems God has been trying to get a message over to me and a message over to us. That message for us today is to get up and go. Of the many beautiful messages, signs and wonders coming out of the Easter season, God's message to us right here and right now is to get up and go. Jesus' entire life witness and example exudes this. Jesus' entire ministry was an example for us to get up and go. Now, Old Testament and Biblical language professor uh, John Kerr writes, Leadership is full of tough choices, but it often begins with a simple decision. In Judges 4, when Deborah urged Barak on behalf of God to go and conquer Sisera's army, timid Barak would only go if Deborah accompanied him. Even then, Deborah had to exhort him, Get up, because this is the day Yahweh has given Sisera into your hand. Did not the Lord already go out before you? Judges 4, 14. The message is clear. Get up, because God is on the move. God frequently admonishes his people throughout the scriptures to get up. Using this Hebrew command, kum, he uses it to motivate Abram in Genesis 13.7, Jacob in Genesis 31.13 and again in 35 verse 1, Moses in Deuteronomy 2.13 and 24. Joshua in Joshua 1, 2, 7, 13, and 8, 1. Samuel in 1 Samuel 16, 12. Elijah in 1 Kings 19, 5 and 7. Jeremiah in Jeremiah 13, 4 and 18, 2. Ezekiel in Ezekiel 3, 22. And even Jonah in Jonah 1, 2. And 3 verse 2. Now, God often uses the word when someone knows that he or she should do but needs some encouragement to actually do it. Yet when God says, come, he has already laid the groundwork necessary for the task ahead. He just waits for his people to say yes. Isaiah speaks to the battered people of God with these words, get up, 51 verse 17, shake yourselves from the dust and get up, 52 verse 2, get up, shine for your light has come and the glory of Yahweh has shone on you, 61 verse 1. Despite their history, God's mission is bigger than their shame and he waits to use their lives for his glory. Perhaps this can encourage us as well. Today, God asks us to be the light of the world. But this leadership starts with a simple decision. Will we get up? Nakir examines to get up, or kum, from the aspect of leaders and leadership. And that applies to each and every one of us. We are called to be leaders in our homes, in our places of work, and in every sphere of activity that we engage in. We are called to get up right there and be the ambassadors for Christ that he has crafted us to be. Matthew 5 verse 16 says, In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. But what about the goal part? Matthew chapter 16, verse 15 says, And he said to them, Go into the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. Here Christ is making final preparations with and giving final instructions to his disciples. 
Here Christ is bidding us not to be shy about certain things. Here Christ is bidding us not to be overly conservative and reserved about certain things. Here Christ is telling us to go into the world. I recently heard a preacher say that the church is like a ship and the world is the ocean. The ship, in order to function, needs the ocean. The ship is designed to operate in the ocean. We, the church, we, the people of God, are called to operate in the world, but not be of the world. We are called to go out there and fish for people. We are called to go out there and let the whole world know what Jesus Christ has done for us. Luke 14, 23. Then the master said to the slave, Go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. Go out into the roads and the lanes. I know this part may stun some of us because we believe we are not ready and we are ill-equipped to be evangelists. Yes, I know that's our only concern. I know that we are not concerned with being looked upon as being crazy or being part of a cult. I know our only concerns are our levels of preparedness to compel people to come in. A friend once told me that many of us are overprepared for evangelism. They said that with the amount of sermons and Bible studies we've endured, we should have our doctorates in spreading the good news. He wasn't 100% joking. But the issue comes when we start to over-compartmentalize our roles in the kingdom. And then we start to believe that sharing the gospel isn't part of our substantive duties or it's not on our, or not on our list of, of roles. We are all ministers. We are all called to share the gospel. We may not do it like, like the reverends and the preachers who, who take to the pulpits, but you, you have your own unique opportunity, talent, and ability to testify about God's goodness and indeed what he has done for you. Acts chapter 1, 7 and 8. He replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. For this one, I just want to focus on the fact that Jesus is calling upon his disciples to be witnesses in different places, different cities, different locations, all over the place to the ends of the earth. Jesus isn't, isn't telling them to, to sit and simply wait for his return. No, 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 no. He's telling them and he's, he's telling us today to get up and go out. Not by our might, not by our power but in the power of the Holy Spirit, that is who fuels us. That is who, who gives us our being. And we do all of this for the glory of God. Matthew 28, 19-20 Go therefore and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son 
and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. The gospel of Jesus Christ is an all-inclusive gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ is for everyone. The good news is for everyone. In fact, everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know. Everybody ought to know who Jesus is. So we are commanded to go out and make disciples of all nations, all households, all individuals, all persons, those we like and those we do not like so much, those who we get along with and those who we may not get along with at all. We must go into the world, go wherever he sends us. We are, we are to teach, to, to preach, to listen, to share, and be present for the kingdom. We, we are to go out there and remember that he is with us. He is with us as we go. He is with us because he has prepared us. He is with us because he has prepared a way. He is with us because he loves us. And indeed, finally, Jesus got onto the cross. The, the, the Prince of Peace came down from his throne to our level and chose and decided to get on the cross. Jesus made the decision to go through the pain and the sorrow. Jesus endured it all. He, he died and he went into the tomb. However, hallelujah, on the third day, Jesus got up and Jesus went out. On the third day, Jesus demolished sin and death. On the third day, the enemy realized that he had been outwitted. On the third day, God's plan took full effect. On the third day, Christ opened wide the door for us so that we can now get up and go, go through the door. Get up and go through the door in purpose. Get up and go through the door with authority. Get up and go through the door so that we can tell others about the great I am. We can get up and we can go in his name. We can get up and, and go despite our past. We can get up and go because he lives. We can get up and go because sin no longer owns us. We, we can get up and go because he has set us free. We can get up and go because he is with us. We can get up and go because God so loves us. My brothers and sisters, today we can get up and go in faith. We can get up and go in hope. We can get up and go in power, in authority, in truth. And we can get up and go, hallelujah, in love. Amen.
I've met this blessed Savior. Since he's cleansed and made me whole.
of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.